So today I'm in a really strange position where I'm actually going to be trying to figure out the weakest of a couple of different processors that I am trying to put into a um, older build that I'm hoping to sell. And the reason that I'm looking for the weaker of the two processors, which are going to be the Phenom 2 1055T versus an FX4300, and I'm strictly looking at gaming here, I want the weaker processor because the graphics card is something like, I believe it's an R5 240 or uh, R7 250 maybe. Uh, one second. The correct card, by the way, is an R7 250, and that particular card, I cannot imagine that it's going to be bottlenecked up by either of these two processors. So for those of you that aren't familiar, the 1055T is an older process than the FX series of processors. It's an older architecture, but there are six cores there, whereas the FX4300, although a slightly newer architecture, still not a good architecture and only four cores there, but it is completely unlocked and overclockable, which I will not be taking advantage of because the motherboard that is with the main system that it's going in, not the test system here, but the motherboard that is actually in the system, this processor or the 1055T will actually live in, does not have great power delivery, also has one of those um, disgusting sort of AMD coolers on it that's just really really loud and I don't want the system to be even louder yet and regardless I really feel like the GPU is going to be the bottleneck in that system either way whether it's overclocked or not so I don't see a point in overclocking it though do understand if you happen to be in a similar position picking between these processors maybe you already have these processors or you are looking at what one to buy used Understand that if you have a good motherboard, the FX4300 can actually overclock quite well and you can get a lot of extra performance out of it. So before we move into the couple of games that I tested, I did want to take a look at eBay and prices that these processors have actually sold recently at. And it looks like the 4300, you can get anywhere between 30 and $40 looks like that's a good price. Uh, don't pay much over $40 because it looks like most people aren't paying over $40. Whereas if we go over to the 1055T, it looks like you can find those for in the 50-ish range, though some people have clearly been successful in getting them for less, more like $45 or even this person got one for $40. So if you can find a good price on them, the 1055T uh, may be worth a little bit of the extra investment. We're gonna find out here in a minute when we look at the gaming benchmarks, but the price difference is gonna be there. Um, if you're looking at a $30 4300 and maybe a $40 1055T that may perform a little bit better, I'm not sure the extra 10 bucks is really worth your while, but the, the prices are comparable, so just keep that in mind if you happen to be looking for one of these processors down the road. That's what people are paying right now. And just for reference, the FX4300, which is a six-core uh, part on the same architecture as the 4300, is pricing actually fairly well also in the $45 range. Some people have gotten them as cheap as $38, $39, so really... Um, unless you have a 1055T just in your hand like I do, the FX6300 is going to be the better option because it will outperform a 1055T hands down. But since the 1055T and the 4300 are the two parts that I have in hand and I'm working with, obviously I'm not going to be spending extra money and I'm going to try to find the weaker of the two parts so I know which one to keep and which one to toss in this system. So let's go ahead and move over to the Cinebench score and really this was predictable with the 1055T and its two extra cores doing significantly better in the multi-threaded score though that gets flipped back around when we look at the single threaded score though the single threaded score is not a gigantic gap in the grand scheme of things. Those two extra cores in modern games especially that are starting to take more advantage of more cores and more threads actually may help out quite a bit. And that was indeed the case in Overwatch with the 1055T not only sustaining higher frame rates overall, but it also had less dips in the frame rate, making the game much more playable. And if you look at the 4300 side of the equation, that processor is basically pinned the entire time to 100%. And by the way, the testing was done here with a GTX 1060 six gigabyte card as well as 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. So the bottom neck here with this setup is very obviously the FX 4300 whereas the 1055T for the most part still kept that graphics card pretty well fed comparatively. 
That story got turned around a little bit when we looked at Rocket League in a little bit of a strange way too. The FX 4300 on a purely frame rate perspective, and that's just if we're looking at the averages, performed quite a bit better than the 1055T, keeping the GTX 1060 fed most of the time with more frames. The problem was the FX 4300 definitely stuttered more and on more occasions than the 1055T did. Now, it wasn't to the point like it was in Overwatch where it was a borderline so obnoxious that you couldn't play the game well, but if you are somebody that wants buttery smooth gameplay the majority of the time, the 4300, even though it has higher frame rates most of the time, is probably not the way to go here. In this case, I would actually even go with the 1055T again, just because it was a smoother gameplay. So the verdict for me is fairly simple. I'm actually going to be using and putting that FX 4300 in the system with the R7 250 because in my opinion, and this is just looking at games, by the way, that are easy to run because frankly, an R7 250 is only going to be running some of these easier to run games. We're not going to be running games like The Witcher. Uh, you might be able to get away with GTA 5 if you would drop some of the settings and that sort of thing. But for the most part, anyone that buys the system is buying it for esports games and in my opinion the 4300 is the weaker of the two processors so i'm going to hang on to the 1055t um, i'll probably use it in testing down the road you never know what you'll need an old processor for but the fx 4300 in my mind is a pretty good matchup with the r7 250 because both the parts are weak uh, as more and more modern games start taking advantage of more cores and more threads the 1055t will actually age quite a bit better, I think, than the FX 4300 will because all six of those cores will be getting taken advantage of. Overwatch was a great example. If you go back and look at the footage of the 1055T, um, all of the cores are being utilized effectively and none of them are completely pinned, but they're all in that, you know, 70, 80% range of usage. So all those cores are getting used, whereas in the 4300, all cores are also getting used. The problem was all cores were pinned. So if you are in a situation where you're looking at a 1055T, maybe you already have one of those and you're looking at an upgrade to one of the FX processors, I would avoid the quad cores altogether at this point, especially if you're looking at playing any kind of recent games and stick with these six core and up processors for these older AMD architectures because they are just aging better as games take more advantage of more cores and more threads. But of course, I want to know what you're running in your older AMD gaming rig. Are you running one of these old quad cores, one of these old six cores, or even one of these FX8 cores like the 8350 that uh, served me quite well for quite a while? Let me know down below. And of course, if you like this video, hey, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I will let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.